Today we're going to talk about a subject that comes up quite often. People ask me all the time, where should I live, Jeff? You know, but reality is sometimes they really want a single family home, right? They don't want a condo. They don't want, you know, live in a high rise. They want a single family home, but they might be on a budget. So let's talk about those more affordable neighborhoods that you can get into in the city and still have that sort of vibrant community of, of uh, San Francisco offer. So let's get right at it. You know, I do get calls quite often. I talk to a lot of people and they say, well, where do I want to live? I want to live in a single family home. And remember, single family home is always going to be a better investment option versus a condo, TIC, or co-op. All of those have different uh, value propositions for the right people. But a lot of people, they just want the single family home. They don't want an HOA. They want to control their own home. They want to upgrade their own home. They want to expand possibly. So today we're going to talk about those, those, uh, those best, more affordable neighborhoods. And I have to start off with Excelsior. Excelsior District lives south of the 280 freeway. So you're on the south side of the city. And really the things to think about is really how are you getting to work from that point of view because you're a little bit further south than some of the other communities. But that area is really vibrant. You do have Geneva Street, you have Mission Street, you have shopping, you do have some transportation, you do have great freeway access over there, but you have single family detached and attached homes going up a hillside. You know, it's a gradual slope, but I find that those homes are going to be sometimes priced just under a million dollars. They might get a bidding war, but they're going to close at 1.2, 1.3. And those homes really, you know, sometimes they need a little bit of work, but you got a single family home, sometimes upgraded. And if this upgraded, it's going to be, you know, some competition. But I find a lot of homes where you can add value and really it's a vibrant community, pretty decent schools. And I, and I just, there's something about it. You have internationally named cities or streets. There's just something about it. I'm always going to, if somebody's really looking for a single family home and they're, you know, at 1 million to a 1 million and a quarter, absolutely, you have to look over there. A little bit higher price point, but on the north side of the 280 freeway is going to be Glen Park. Now, Glen Park um, has a little downtown area. Uh, you do have access to a really nice park right there. Same with Excelsior, but it's really, really achievable from that downtown area where you can just go walking, right? Um, you also have freeway access. You also have uh, the light rail train right there. So, you know, from, from a Muni point of view, or from a BART point of view, you can, you can get out of there fairly, fairly quickly. You know, and the thing is, it's a nice little community. You have the downtown area. Um, it's really cute, it's quaint, and I, I find that um, that area sort of wraps around, you know, it's it's just really a nice community overall. It's a little bit higher price point than Excelsior. You're looking at 1.3, 1.4, maybe 1.5. Depends on what your budget is and where you're going to be able to approach into the marketplace. I think that anywhere that you are looking to buy and you're sort of trying to get into the marketplace, Try to find something that could add some value. You know, that's really where you're going to be able to, you know, maximize your investment is if you find something that, you know, needs to be renovated, might have an older kitchen, older bathrooms, you know, those things to me aren't very complicated. I've done plenty of uh, renovations and, and those, you know, if you can find something like that, that's it's outstanding. Another neighborhood that I really like overall, you could say that the, the sunset or Parkside district, you know, going towards the ocean is a really nice spot. It's a massive sub district if you look at all of it because you have inner park side, outer park side, central park side, central sunset, outer sunset. But inner sunset, I think, depending on where your price point is, I really like inner sunset. From a price and affordability point of view, it's probably one of my favorites for a single family home. And, and part of the reason is this, you know, uh, Golden Gate Park. I lived for many years walking through the Golden Gate Park, running, pushing my kids, my strollers, walking the dog. Being able to access that is fantastic, right? Because it's really your out. If you're looking for a little bit of nature, 
you're going to the park or you're going all the way to the ocean. So the outer sunset, outer parkside area, you're good, right? You're right at the ocean, especially if you're a surfer. Hey, great. The, uh, the thing about inner sunset though, is you have the N Judah Muni line that goes right through there. So transportation downtown is really good, right? But you also have a, a very vibrant community and you also have a lot of things that are going on. A lot of shopping, good restaurants. You know, you have access to the park, you have access to transportation options. It's a real nice area. I sold a house last year uh, on 11th Avenue. I think we at price at like 1.5. So you're getting a little bit higher in price point compared to Excelsior which is a little bit cheaper, granted that, but you just get so much. And Inner Sunset, that it's a great community. Absolutely love it. Multicultural, um, it's just, you know, it, I, I think it's one that you really want to look at. If you're going to be a little bit less of, of that, you know, 1. 1 and a quarter, 1.3, just push yourself out to the outside and go towards the ocean a little bit. You go, you know, Inner Sunset, Central Sunset, outer sunset. The further you go out, you're going to get more fog. You're going to get a little bit more weather on your building. So you have to really do your due diligence when you're looking at old wood structures when you get out there. The thing is, you get some liquefaction when you get all the way out there. Because remember, 150 years ago, there was nothing there except for sand. So we, you get, you got to do your due diligence. You know, you're going to get mold issues. You can get more fungus issues, dry rot issues. And then you also have to make sure that the house is, is nice and secure, you know, bolted foundation. You know, if you can get, um, uh, update that the house seismically, I think that is a very, very good thing to do. It only adds to a resale value at the end of the day. So those are really my three top areas within the city that for single family home buyers that are really, that, that, that can you can achieve, you know, fairly uh, inexpensively compared to other neighborhoods within the city. Because remember, when you get into some of the premier areas in the city, you're really gonna start looking at condos and co-ops and, and TICs, Russian Hill Pacific Heights and some of those older areas, Noe Valley, you know, all of those other neighborhoods are absolutely fantastic. But for single family home buyers, you know, you should check out these areas just to be able to sort of check it off the box. If you like, if you don't remember, you know, there are well over 90 different neighborhoods in the city of San Francisco, if you can believe it. They are all a little bit different. And if you are a home shopper, you really need to be able to explore all of these different options to see really what is the best fit for you. You know, it does take some time. Uh, it's part of my job. I love looking at real estate, love, you know, sometimes I'm a tour guide, showing people where the best places for them to live. And I can pretty much nail it pretty good just after having a series of conversations and really sort of asking those specific questions for clients. So regardless, I hope this information has been helpful. Remember, I do get calls all the time. I am more than willing and happy to talk to you you know, and just be able to be straight up and just give you my opinion. I'd love to talking about uh, real estate with folks. And really, my biggest accolade is really, at, at, at the end of the day, having a, a job well done for my clients, having my clients be really happy with where they're at, because I make things happen for people. I make magic happen for people at times. And uh, they're so thankful and, and they uh, praise me with their testimonials. And you know, so I want you to just play it simply. If you, if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm happy to talk to you. Check me on my socials, my LinkedIn profile. You know, you have everything there. You have Instagram, all of that stuff. Feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for watching and you have a very, very good day.